Today we're going to be talking about uh, protecting data with CSI volume snapshots on Kubernetes. Um, cool, my name is uh, Greg Griffiths. A little bit about me, um, uh, my GitHub, uh, Twitter are there if you're interested in reaching out. Um, but I'm a software engineer at, uh, at Portworks, a uh, company uh, uh, owned by Pure Storage. Um, and at Portworks, I work on the CSI control plane and, and, and I do some community work as well. Um, Previously, I was at, uh, at GE Digital, where I did data services and uh, platform engineering type work. Um, I'm also a contributor to Kubernetes CSI and Nomad CSI as well. Um, helped, helped out a bunch uh, with uh, Kubernetes CSI volume snapshots, um, uh, as well as uh, a couple other features um, as well. So, uh, For fun, I like rock climbing. Uh, this is a picture of me in the background uh, in the French Alps. Um, and uh, I also like to do uh, some running and snowboarding as well. Cool, let's get going. So what we'll cover today is uh, we'll cover uh, the CSI spec. We'll also go over Kubernetes CSI volume snapshots. And then we'll also cover a demo on, uh, on CSI snapshots. And then we'll also do a uh, quick discussion on uh, systems that are utilizing uh, snapshots. Cool, so first let's get into the CSI spec. So folks out there might be kind of familiar with the CSI spec already, but I figured I'd cover it. Um, basically, it's a contract between different container orchestrators, so things like Kubernetes, Nomad, uh, and storage plugin plugins themselves. So uh, yeah, so it's a contract of uh, basically a set of gRPC services, protobuf services for provisioning, utilizing, and snapshotting uh, storage volumes. Um, so yeah, you have like the container orchestrator, something like Kubernetes, Mesos, Nomad, uh, and then those container container orchestrators communicate to CSI drivers such as you know RBD, uh, blocks, uh, DigitalOcean block storage, GCE, PD, uh, Portworks, uh, a bunch of other um, uh, you know uh, storage plugins. Uh, next, uh, yeah, so there's you can actually go ahead and, uh, and check out the CSI spec itself. It's in uh, GitHub.com/container-storage-interface/spec. And then inside of that, um, there's a CSI.proto file. And this contains all of the different protobuf definitions uh, for kind of communicating over, um, over gRPC between the container orchestrator and the CSI drivers. Uh, yeah, and it's, yeah, it uses gRPC Go. So you can check that project out as well. So the main thing with, uh, with CSI snapshots are there's three main controller service calls. Um, and controller service being, uh, there's, there's three different types of services. There's the controller service, which runs on kind of controller nodes. Uh, there's the node service, which is expected uh, to run on every node in the cluster. And then there's the identity service with CSI, which is basically uh, how CSI plugins kind of identify themselves in a system. Uh, yeah, so there's three main controller ones, the ones for snapshotting, create snapshot, delete snapshot, and list snapshot. And these are all item potent to kind of make it easier to uh, for the controller and driver to kind of uh, connect with each other and kind of build a, establish a contract with each other. Cool, so next we'll talk about Kubernetes CSI volume snapshots. So yeah, this is a huge diagram. It kind of goes over what uh, all the different components are in a deployment. Um, so the main ones we'll talk about today are the CSI snapshotter and the CSI snapshot controller, as well as the CSI provisioner. So as you can see, all of these uh, sidecars, they all, um, they all listen for kind of changes to objects. So the provisioner is always listening on provisioner changes. The, uh, the snapshotter is listening on snapshot contents and does a like, create delete snapshot. Uh, and then the uh, snapshot controller is kind of um, handling uh, you know, volume snapshot creation and that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, then, so these kind of sidecars, they can talk with any CSI driver and it kind of just pings the CSI. Um, there's also the node driver registrar that's in charge of registering these nodes, these uh, CSI drivers on all the different nodes. Cool, so that's kind of uh, how it works in a nutshell. Um, next, we're gonna get a quick overview on snapshotting for CSI uh, with Kubernetes. So yeah, it's Kubernetes, um, as, as the feature kind of suggests, uh, the feature name suggests, there's, uh, it allows for snapshotting and restoring persistent volume claims. Um, and uh, this feature is available for Kubernetes clusters um, 
120 and above, it's GA, more GA available. It's the recommended version, at least as a Kubernetes 120. Um, and it kind of util uh, utilizes um, CRDs, which are custom resource definitions. So these are external to the core Kubernetes API. Um, the team kind of develops uh, these APIs kind of outside of uh, the core Kubernetes API. So um, and it also requires an additional snapshot controller uh, deployment to operate. But if you're using a CSI driver on a um, managed kind of Kubernetes service, it'll, they'll likely already install that for you. Or the um, CSI driver documentation will also probably tell you how to do that. And yeah, many, many different CSI drivers support it. Um, yeah, there's a, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's the volume snapshot CRDs. Um, so this is created, uh, the, the volume snapshot class is kind of similar to a storage class if you've kind of used uh, uh, Kubernetes persistent storage before. It's created by an admin or an end user, and this contains all the storage plugin parameters, maybe specific features that different uh, storage uh, plugins provide. And you can also provide secrets, whether that's for kind of encryption. Um, and then you can also set the retain policy as well on the uh, snapshot class. So for example, the retain policies, if it's delete, then it'll, um, the underlying snapshot will be deleted uh, when you delete the object itself. And then there's retain, which uh, we'll go ahead and leave that snapshot data uh, if you were to delete the object. So that's kind of a more safe kind of way to do it. Um, and yeah, there's the volume snapshot. This is the end user's object to dictate that they want to snapshot a PVC. And then the snapshot content is created by the CSI snapshotter. And uh, that's a cluster wide object as opposed to the snapshot itself, which is a namespace specific. And yeah, there's a deployment that I mentioned. Um, Snapshot controller, snapshot sidecar, snapshotter sidecar. Uh, we talked about those already. And then there's the snapshot validation webhook. And what this is, is in charge of is basically ensuring that the end user is kind of creating volume snapshots correctly. So it has a whole series of different checks to make sure that you know, you're not doing anything that could uh, cause harm to you. Cool. So let's do a quick demo on CSI snapshots. Um, Terminal, cool. So I have a whole bunch of different files here. Uh, we have a generic kind of MySQL P, uh, deployment right here. As you can see, it references the PVC uh, volume claim right there. So first thing we want to do is create a PVC. So we have one right here, actually. It's called uh, MySQL data, and it's using a PowerWorks storage class because that is the uh, this the provider that I'm working with here. So I just went ahead and I created the storage class. Next, what we're gonna do is go ahead and create the PVC. As you can see, the PVC is already bound, it's ready to use. Um, now let's go ahead and create our MySQL pod. Oops, SQL.yaml. Awesome, so now it's doing container creating. What's happening in the back end is it's doing a node publish volume for PowerWorks to kind of uh, um, mount this, uh, this volume inside of the pod, inside of the container, so that it's ready for application data. Cool, so now let's go ahead and do a uh, volume snapshot. But first, what we need is a snapshot class. Awesome. The snapshot class is pretty uh, straightforward. Let's just take a quick look. Basic volume snapshot class, I have a retain policy as delete, and we're using the PowerWorks CSI driver. So now let's go ahead and create our volume snapshot. Awesome, so we have right here a new volume snapshot, snapshot one. It is ready to use true. The source PVC is our PVC. And as you can see, it's all good. So we're safe to kind of just go ahead and delete our uh, application because we've backed up the data. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops, we have to uh, do this. And we can delete the PVC as well. Cool. So that while that's running, what we can do is actually go ahead and restore our PVC. So if we get PVC, the restore has been created. And now what we can go ahead and do is uh, create our MySQL restored. Oops. Cool. 
Cool. So now we have restored our pod with uh, with the restored PVC. Awesome. So really quickly, um, just wanted to go over some systems that are utilizing snapshots. Um, so we have many different systems that integrate with CSI snapshots. There's a uh, you know, I'm not going to list them all, but uh, they're all here for you to check out. Um, it's really cool to see uh, all these different companies kind of utilizing the work that we did for uh, Kubernetes CSI snapshots. So these are all pulled directly from the Kubernetes blog. So uh, if you have another storage plugin that, uh, that supports this, uh, make sure to uh, get it out there. So cool. Uh, lastly, this is Stork CSI driver. This is the one that I worked on. Um, it enables backup and restore via CSI CRs. So it can create a volume snapshot CR and store these in a S3 compatible backup location. Um, this is all of PX backup, this is the, the product that I've worked on. So, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on the Kubernetes Slack, uh, data on Kubernetes Slack, um, or Twitter as well. Cool, thanks everyone. <laughs>